Welcome and thank you for joining us for this exciting tutorial. In this session, we will delve into the world of procedural content generation and explore the incredible capabilities of our new product, the Procedural Road Generator Tool for Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has always been at the forefront of innovation and with the introduction of Unreal Engine 5.2, Epic Games has brought forth a host of new features, including the powerful procedural content generation framework. This tutorial will demonstrate how to harness the potential of this framework and combine it with our road generator tool to create breathtaking environments within Unreal Engine. Throughout this video tutorial we will guide you step by step showcasing how to apply procedural content generated by our tool to create stunning scenes. Specifically, we will focus on utilizing the Quixel Megascans library foliage, enhancing the visual appeal of your environment. Before we delve into the tutorial itself, we invite you to explore our showcase video on our YouTube channel, titled PCG Road Generator for Unreal Engine. This video will provide you with an in-depth overview of the tool, its functionalities, and the incredible possibilities it offers for your projects. So, grab your popcorn, sit back, and get ready to embark on an exhilarating journey into the world of procedural content generation and the limitless potential of our road generator tool for Unreal Engine. Before we dive into working with the exciting PCG content, it's crucial to ensure that it is enabled in our project settings. Let's follow these steps to enable the plugin. First, navigate to the Project Settings section and locate the Plugins tab. Once you're there, type procedural content in the search bar to quickly find the relevant plugin. Confirm that the plugin is enabled by checking the corresponding box. Now that we have the PCG plugin enabled, we can proceed to create our PCG graph. To do this, right click within the content browser and select create PCG graph. Let's name our graph road demo for clarity. With the PCG graph created, it's time to bring it into our scene. Drag and drop the PCG volume into the scene, ensuring that you scale it up appropriately. It's essential to position the road within the PCG volume, as this volume represents the area where the content will be generated in the scene. Next, click on the road generator and use the search bar within the properties panel to filter for the tag property. Here, we need to create a tag name. This tag will be used in the PCG graph to specify the target for content generation. By assigning this tag, the PCG system will know precisely where to place the generated content. Please remember to complete this crucial step, as it ensures that the PCG system functions correctly and accurately places the content within the designated area. To open the PCG graph, simply double-click on it. Upon opening, you will notice two nodes, input and output. These nodes will be utilized later in the process. To proceed, press the tab key or right click anywhere within the graph node area and type in Git Spline Data. Locate the settings for this node and navigate to the Actor Filter section. Here, select All World Actors. Next, choose Actor Selection by tag and input the tag road. It is important to note that the same tag has been assigned to our road generator. By doing this, we inform the PCG system where to generate the content. Now, let's incorporate another node named Transform Points. To better understand the scene and visualize the content generation process, let's enable the debugging feature for this node. By switching the scale method to Absolute in the debug options, you can press the D key to preview the resulting content directly in the viewport. This will provide you with a visual representation of where the generated content will appear. Within the Transform Points node, you have the ability to manipulate the location, rotation, and scale of the spawn points. These points serve as representations of future assets that will be replaced later. By adjusting these values, you can scatter the assets alongside the road. Let's experiment with some values and observe the result in the viewport. To create a strip of trees, for instance, input specific maximum and minimum offset values, as well as a rotation angle. This will generate a series of points along the road, simulating trees along the roadside. However, you may notice that the points are currently floating in the air. To address this, we'll introduce another node called Projection to project these points onto the landscape. To make the Projection node operational, connect it to the Input node. Expand the Input node and establish a connection between the landscape and the Projection target in the Projection node. 
To visualize the projection of the points, activate the debugging mode on the projection node by pressing the D key again. Additionally, ensure that you modify the scale method to absolute in the debugging settings of the projection node. This adjustment is crucial for previewing the projected points accurately on the landscape. Without this modification, the preview may not show the projected points. Now, with the projection properly visualized, you will notice that the points are projected onto the landscape instead of floating in the air. To extend the line of trees to the other side of the road, follow these steps. Simply copy and paste the transform points node. Connect the copied node to the get spline data and projection node. Adjust the location values within the copied node to negative values. This adjustment will effectively flip the points and position them on the opposite side of the road. By following these steps, you will be able to visualize the projection of points on the landscape and extend the line of trees to both sides of the road. Once you are satisfied with the initial settings and the placement of the projected points, it's time to replace them with foliage assets. For this example, we will be using foliage assets from the Quixel Megascan library. To replace the projected points with foliage assets, follow these steps. Add a static mesh spawner node to the PCG graph. To specify your custom meshes, go to the settings of the static mesh spawner node and locate the mesh entry section. To add variations of foliage assets, add elements to the mesh entries array. You can include as many variations as you desire. In this case, we will add a few tree variations to the array. To add your custom meshes, simply drag and drop them from the content browser to the mesh array in the descriptor section, specifically in the static mesh field. Once you have added your custom meshes, you should be able to see the trees scattered in place of the projected points. Now, let's organize the nodes we have created so far by grouping them with a comment. Select all the nodes and create a group using a comment. Let's name this comment group trees. Using comment groups will make the PCG graph more organized and easier to navigate. Currently, we don't have control over the number of instances, trees, spawned along the road. To address this, we will add a new node called Spline Sampler to our existing PCG graph. Place this node between the Transform Point nodes and the Get Spline Data node. The Spline Sampler node allows us to set the desired amount of spawned instances along the road spline. By adjusting the value of subdivisions per segment in the node settings, you can increase or decrease the number of spawn trees along the road. Additionally, you can switch the mode value from subdivisions to distance and set the distance increment, which represents the gap size between each spawned instance. These settings will provide further control over the density and distribution of the trees along the road. To incorporate grass and scatter it along the roadside similar to the trees, we can make use of the existing nodes we have created and modify their settings accordingly. Copy and paste all the nodes we have created so far, excluding the Get Spline Data node, as we will continue using the same spline data. Group these duplicated nodes using a comment, just like we did before, and label the comment group as grass. Reconnect all the nodes together, ensuring that the landscape is properly connected to the projection node. This will ensure that the grass is projected onto the landscape and doesn't appear floating in the air along the road spline. Adjust the min and max offset values within each node to position the spawned grass at the desired locations. Within the static mesh spawner node, replace all the static mesh entries representing trees with static meshes of grass. This will ensure that grass is spawned instead of trees. For the grass, utilize the distance mode within the spline sampler node. Set the distance increment to a suitable value, such as 1, to scatter the grass more densely. This will create a lush, grassy landscape appearance. By following these steps, you will successfully add and scatter grass along the roadsides using the existing nodes in your PCG graph. Adjusting the settings, such as min and max offsets and the distance increment, will allow you to precisely control the placement and density of the grass. One of the exciting new features introduced in Unreal Engine 5.2 is the path tracing capability for spline mesh components. Let's explore how the road appears with path tracing enabled. As you can see, the results are incredibly realistic. However, one issue I noticed is that the trees appear rotated on steep areas of the landscape, which is not realistic. But there's a simple fix for this. 
go to the PCG graph and access the settings of the projection node. In the Apply Data section, uncheck the Project Rotation option. Once you do this, you will observe that the trees are now vertical, just as they should be in the real world. By disabling the rotation projection, we ensure that the trees align properly with the terrain, creating a more realistic and visually pleasing scene. To add an additional layer of visual interest to our road scene, let's incorporate some dry leaves on the road or sidewalks. This extra foliage will enhance the realism of our scene. The process is similar to what we've done before, utilizing some of the nodes we've already created. Copy the spline sampler and transform point nodes we created earlier. Reconnect these nodes as before, ensuring they are in the correct order. Group these nodes using a comment, naming the comment group leaves. Since we don't need to project the leaves onto the landscape, we won't use the projection node. The position of the leaves will be based on the shape of the road rather than the landscape. In the Static Mesh Spawner node, change the static mesh variations to dry leaves to represent the foliage. Adjust the location offset within the transform point nodes to position the leaves on the road. In this case, we will place them alongside the curbs. Don't forget to adjust the min and max offset location values in the z-direction. This ensures that the leaves are spawned on the road surface rather than below it. By following these steps, you will successfully add dry leaves to the road scene, enhancing the overall realism. Adjusting the settings, such as min and max offsets in transform point nodes and the distance increment in spline sampler node, will allow you to precisely control the placement and density of the leaves. With this flexible workflow, you have the freedom to add as many layers of foliage or custom meshes as you desire. In this particular presentation, I've chosen to add an additional layer of foliage to further enhance the final result. Specifically, I've opted to include dry weeds alongside the sidewalk, creating the impression of an unmaintained or abandoned road. To incorporate the weeds onto the road, I've copied the nodes used for spawning leaves and made necessary adjustments. By modifying settings such as the min and max offsets in the transform point nodes and the distance increment in the spline sampler node, I precisely scattered the weeds along the border between the curb and sidewalk. This allows you to achieve the desired placement and add an extra touch of realism to the scene. One of the remarkable advantages of this workflow is the ability to quickly edit the shape of the road by manipulating the road spline points. At any point in the process, you can add or remove road modules without any additional steps required. All changes are automatically projected onto the scene, saving you time and effort. This exceptional feature empowers you to create numerous variations effortlessly. Once you've established your PCG graph with the foliage, you can make substantial changes to your scene without worry. Thanks to the procedural nature of the process, everything adjusts automatically ensuring that all elements remain in their proper places. Whether you're making radical changes to the road shape or sculpting the landscape, the adjustments will be projected seamlessly and effortlessly. This level of flexibility and efficiency allows you to experiment freely, iterate rapidly, and ultimately create captivating environments. With the assurance that everything will adapt and remain in place, you can focus on the creative process without being burdened by tedious manual adjustments. I encourage you to take our road generator for a spin and push it to its limits. Be sure to watch our showcase video of the PCG road generator for Unreal Engine 5, which highlights all the incredible capabilities and features of this product. You can find the link to the showcase video in the description below. Say goodbye to countless hours spent manually creating and placing assets. With our road generator, you can save time and effort, allowing you to focus on refining your level design. This workflow is designed to take your skills to the next level and enhance your overall level design experience. You can find our PCG Road Generator on the Unreal Marketplace. Simply follow the link provided in the description of this video tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or subscribe to our channel to keep you updated on all the exciting content we're working on. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and don't forget to render your tail with us.